woman. I can't stop it. Where's my medal? St. Gerard. He usually sees me right. Fetch the priest. enough. Do I just wash him? Yes. I can't do it, Father. Yes, you can. Has anybody said it's God's will yet? If they have, I haven't heard them. Makes no odds. He's already willed me seven. And he'll will me some more before he's done, I don't doubt. Do you want them to come in? Go on. Right, in you come. <laughs> <laughs> Gently. Come on, you lads. <laughs> You're right, Peg. I'm grand. What's that? Cream line toffees, but they're for your man. Yeah. He wants one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Come on. Come on, then. You have it. I want one. Come on. <laughs> All right, another one, yeah. Hey, come on, Margaret. Come oh, on. I nearly got one. That's it. Come on, Arthur. Time yeah. for it. Come on. That's it, man. Go on, Queen. Take two. You've earned them. Three weeks. Three weeks you've been sat on your backside. I'm not sat on my backside. I'm planning my next step. You want to plan your next step towards a wardrobe? Find yourself a blouse and a skirt. Eight o'clock at night and you've not been dressed all day. It's hot. But anyway, I'm saving my clothes in case I get an interview. Interview for what? You haven't applied for anything. How can I? Raisendales wouldn't give me a reference. Why not? I'm sad. I'm being selective. The rent man's not selective. Hello? Is it alright if my granddad comes through? No. Of course it is, Frank. Is your water still off? Not at all, on our side of the street. Aye. Right. Mind the rug there, granddad! I'll fill a bucket up for you, man. Midnight would do the same for you, not without charging. That woman would charge you for the teacup of her piss. Hello, mate. <sighs> Through. I'll leave some paper for the people who live here this time. I still don't see why Mrs. Brazendale just sacked you. I mean, so what if she took a fancy to that nurse who went to Wales with her? I don't see why you should be thrown out on the street. Well, she's like that, isn't she? She was spoilt as a child, no thought for anybody else but herself. Mm. You ought to write to them. Something like, Dear Mr and Mrs Brazendale, whilst I respectfully appreciate your desire for a change of staff, I beg to inform you that I am finding it difficult to obtain new employment in the absence of any reference from yourselves. Beg. Beg. I'll offer to lick their shoes clean while I'm at it. 
You don't think it's a good idea then? Sending them a nice polite letter? No. Oh, only I've posted it. Oh, it's all right. I signed it in your name. Treated with your herbs. <coughs> we can't afford the doctor. You will tangle with that later. You're ill yourself. I'll walk and fetch him now. Streptococcus. What does that mean? Scarlet fever for him, puerperal infection for her. Same bacteria causes both. There have been five cases in Garston already. Hospital for you. Examined. You're the eldest, you've got to act responsibly. Yes, but what if he sends me to the hospital as well? The doctor won't send you to the hospital unless you're ill. Morning. Who are you? My name's Pritchard. I'm with the Board of Health. Confirmed? Scarlet fever, one adult male, one postpartum strep fatal. Upstairs, front bedroom. <laughs> I want that bucket in there emptied and lime spread on the ground. Is it any wonder disease spreads in this squalor? They've had no running water for a week. My department's epidemics have nothing to do with running water. What about them? No sign so far. They'll need to be quarantined. Out of my way. This is a potential source of contagion. I want it all burned. How many children do you have? Seven. Oh, God. I've made arrangements for them already. My daughter will stay here while her father is in hospital. No, she will not. This house has no sanitation, no running water. It appears to be an epicenter of infection. <coughs> I'm having it cleared of all its occupants today and boarded up to await the fumigation van. You can board up whatever you like. You can burn everything that's movable. But I will act as a decent neighbor should and take the children into my own home. <coughs> You'll make yourself officially overcrowded. So what are you gonna do? Send round the tally man? Possibly. Coffin's downstairs. The corpse will have to go to the public mortuary, it's as likely a source of infection as this disgusting house. This is not a disgusting house. Huh? I have a room in which I can isolate the coffin. I am taking the children. <laughs> I will take their mother, too. Dad! Oh, come on. Dad! Okay. 
all right, sir. You do not have the authority to do this. I have the authority of the city corporation. Who do you answer to? A slightly higher authority than that. And if God doesn't frighten you, you should try talking to your conscience. I have no conscience where infection is concerned. Come on, lad. No. Don't let them separate you. Body. Stick together. Yes. Stick Come together, on. lad. She never missed a meal, Mr. McBride. Eh? Why not? Right, Why not? we're going to have to tilt it up, right? Right, take the weight. Careful, take careful. Charlie, take the weight. Take the. Oh. Get, a, get a good grip. Right, bring it right. Watch the door frame. Watch the door frame. Slowly now. Slowly now. Gonna have to oh. grab a chair, Albert. Have to grab a chair. All right. Here you come. All right, sir. Here we go. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Not that. It's a good thing, sir. Get that chair over there. Oh, oh good. Hey. Right. Oh, God. Yeah, I'll just... Here, I'll just take it right in my own. Right there you oh, go. Sorry. Ready? Sorry. Right. Ready? Hey, lads. All right. All right. She's happy now. This is a Christian act, Mr. Moss. No disrespect to the deceased, but I don't know how I'm supposed to see my clients. Ruby, move your merchandise. Now, is there anything at all that I can do to help? Well, yes, sir. There is. Mrs. Lynch will be delighted. Are you sure? She likes to keep busy. To tell you the truth, we've been rattling around a bit since Father Wolf went to the sanatorium. I'd better go. Shall we? You got that tall, maybe we have to stick together. Bonnie. This is just a matter of a night or two in separate houses. You're a family, and I respect that. How do I know? You'll have a lovely time at the Presbytery. There's loads of beds, and Mrs. Lynch will cook you lovely dinners. Now, trust me, it's not for long. I'm telling you now, he won't stay in that basket. You'll have to take him into bed with you. There's no room in our bed. Well, get him a cot then. <laughs> what about the girls? Move. Uh, the girls can have my bed. There you are. Problems. Any room at the inn? I could say the same to you. I'm all right. I know me way. Do you want to come and keep it hard, Bill? Will you put bed for one of your visitors? I don't think I've got any choice. You'll have to clear it with your mum. Linger pack tea. Now, you're not allowed to go outside the box. And nobody else is allowed inside the box. Why? Because you might have scarlet fever. these children properly quarantined. Get them indoors now! Yeah. Come, come, in, in. If you can't keep them indoors in a situation where they can be prevented from passing on infection, I shall send them to the isolation hospital in Wales. Their father entrusted them to us. He's their next of kin. And you flout his wishes, you're breaking the law. And excuse me, but I didn't hear you knock. That corpse is ten foot from this table. Are these for home consumption or commercial sale? I'm an outworker for Vigils of Vienna. And mind, all you get cocoa on your coat. Get out of my kitchen. Have you a license for that livestock? I left it in my other trousers. I want these chocolates disposed of and the kitchen disinfected. Oh, well, disinfect everywhere after you've gone. I hope you will. You have illegal livestock. You produce comestibles in the proximity of infection and you're overcrowded. If we send an official inspector around, you'll be out on your ear. A lot of you.
bid you good night. An official inspector. He means the tallyman. It might all just be hot air. They haven't sent the tallyman since before the war. Have you forgotten what it was like? Doors banging in the night and kids screaming. The Gallagher's opposite had 11 children. They took half of them away and the family never lived under one reef again. Well, we are not having that happen this time. Not in this house or in any other. Letter for you. It says on the back, Brazendale and Walker ships brokers. I'll open it later. Don't you dare open my personal correspondence. It's from an office, so it's business correspondence. And I'm the one who wrote them, so it's personal to me. Give it here. Dear Miss Moss, my wife and I were of the view that due to your abrupt departure, you had forfeited your right to the customary reference. What does he mean, abrupt departure? I knew there was something fishy about you not getting the reference. Still, if she shows up at three o'clock this afternoon, she'll be handed the requisite document. Thanks to my letter. I'm not crawling into his office like a, a supplicant. You've made yourself a supplicant by walking out of a perfectly decent job. You're not paying your way, and there's four more mouths to feed. Aren't we in quarantine? Neither of us ever went in them threads. The children are fine. Now get washed and fetch your hat. I'm coming with you. We will need to be brief. Mr. Brazendale is very busy. I popped in to take advantage of the telegraph machine. I had a dress sent from London. The side seam split the first time I wore it. It's extremely vexing. I've been using this couture for years. It's terrible the way some people take advantage. Your reference. I'm sorry I had to trouble you. You're quite at liberty to read the contents. I haven't sealed the envelope. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, see. Aren't you glad you came? Yes, I am. Do you think they'll send the tallyman, Frank? It'll be carnage if they do. Everybody's overcrowded. What was that phrase he used to use? Dispersed to an alternative address. I'd love to be dispersed to an alternative address. Go up with that. Just you and me and your mum. I don't know. He promised us all a land fit for heroes. That's what this is. I don't reckon much to it. Where's all that come from? I passed a hat around at the pitch and toss down the dockyard gates. There'll be no pauper's funerals from my home. Hang on a minute. Gladys is rubbing her head. Are you feeling hot? <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. We've got more visitors than we thought. Nits. Father Melia? Is there anyone in? Someone wet his pants. Again. I'm not saying who. I was just trying to wash and dry them on the stove. Where's Mrs. Lynch? She ran away. She said she'd had enough. When I was a lad, I served the firm as office boy to the furnace firm. I cleaned the windows and I swept the floor and I polished up the handle of the big front door. I polished up the 
Father Wolf, I love Gilbert and Sullivan. I never found that amusing at all. His only other record was the sinking of the troop ship. Well, they go down very well round our house. My turn now. No way out. Nope. I keep waiting for the telephone to ring. The ward sister said today was crucial. Mr. McBride's fever is due to reach its crisis, and he'll either come through or he won't. If he doesn't. It doesn't fathom, Amelia, what will happen to the children. Well, I know what won't happen. You sound very sure. I grew up off the Vauxhall Road. When I was nine years old, my mother and my baby brother died in a typhoid epidemic. I was 18 when my mother died. We were all just children when our mothers died. My father was out of work. He couldn't manage us all on his own, so... He put my sisters with the nuns, and I was sent to the Irish Christian Brothers. Never saw them again. What about your dad? <laughs> he never came back. I lost everything. I found other things. I found God. So I was lucky there, at least he had a plan. Do you think he has a plan for the McBrides? I don't know. But I don't want any child to live the life I had. spent the night at the fever hospital. Why? Because somebody was making a journey out of this world and I had to go and see him on his way. Are you talking about death? Yes. About my dad? I'm not stupid. No, I know. You're very far from stupid. Which is why I told you first. I want to tell the others. I'm the eldest. Iris said I had to act responsible. Do you want to tell them now? No. When we're all together. You will always be together. When we've had a really happy day. I'll need tuppence. What for? I'll just need tuppence.
Keep your eye on them. I'm going to get some ice cream. All right. <laughs> Eight. I've got one for you. Thank you. Here you go, lad. No thanks. I've come for me toffees. <laughs> toffees? They're what I spent the tuppence on. <laughs> I'm going to tell them now. I couldn't bear the thought of never seeing you again. But the situation was impossible. Impossible? What do you want me to say, May? Almost impossible. There'd be hope then. Is that the only reason you brought me here? Say goodbye. I wanted to say goodbye properly. Somewhere where my wife wasn't within earshot. She liked her pearls, didn't she? They were supposed to be for you. I wanted to put them on your pillow so that you saw them when you woke. May, she came back ridiculously early. I heard the car pull up, but before I could get downstairs, she'd already walked into the drawing room. I found the box in the pocket of your linen coat. You'd already seen them. <laughs> Which one of us is going to be the one who walks away? This has got to. If we're gonna say goodbye, I'll do it. If it makes it easier for you.
You're never such a good iron. I was in the Navy, wasn't I? I was in the Navy. I can iron to ladies' maid standards. You can ladies' maid your way through some of this lot, if you like. Nah, it's women's work. They're over the way wants me to take on airs. Frank's mum does? Yeah, but I won't. She's just out to humiliate. Did I tell you? She keeps my pension book. Yes. yes. What I want is a berth in the Turner home. Four meals a day, blanket baths and free tobacco. But I can't get referred. I'm not surprised. The Turner home's for chronic sufferers. I am a chronic sufferer. I've got here for a daughter-in-law. Yeah, she, she what I told you. There, you see? I can hear pigeons. In there. Two lofts. Probable commercial enterprise. I see my daughters didn't manage to teach you any manners. You are obliged to knock before entering a person's property. I didn't enter anybody's property. I merely carried out a preliminary inspection. You've picked the wrong time to speak to me with such a stain. Never a right time huh? to speak to your sword, is there? I've, I've just been organising a funeral for one of my sort. I take it you refer to the McBride case? I refer to a father of many and his wife who did her best. Who we denounce as filthy next? Who else will you be evicting from their homes? <laughs> That will be decided after a full investigation, of which this is just the preliminary part. So when's a real thing? We're only obliged to inform your neighbourhood physician. And don't go laying seeds to his surgery. Even he won't have the letter yet. So who are you when you're at home? I am the telly man. Too small, my feet are killing me. That's nothing to cry about. I mean, feet. They're only there to stop the ends of your legs from fraying. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's more than feet. It's just... It's just that I thought something wonderful was going to happen. It didn't. Do you want to lift the hole? I tried that when that bike was Ruby's. It's murder on the back side. No, look. I'll take my jacket off, put it on the front, and you can sit on that. Only no funny business. Giving up on funny business. Very wise. But I'm telling you, it's not worth it. There's a letter I need to read. It's addressed to Dr. Carmel. It's a criminal act reading other people's mails. It's never stopped anybody in our house. Frank, the Board of Health are sending round the Taliban. When? We don't know when. To be sack out now. When I'm in the uniform, I'm representing the King. And when they're wrenching families apart, who are you representing then? Knock me hats off. Knock it off, go on. Oh, look, I'm not in my uniform. Quick. Good on yourself. <laughs> Get 
Thursday night. The inspection will take place between the hours of midnight and 3 a.m. All households comprising more than three adults and four children will be dispersed and any insanitary practices will be curtailed. We've timed that well, us with a house full of children. Stick the letter down again, give it back to me. We will fight it, won't we? You're bloody right, we'll fight it. Right. This is us. This is Eli Street. And there's Thorry Street, right? This is the gas works. So what's the oxalt in? That's a pitch and toss, and the golden serves the presbytery now. We know that in the past, they've always gone there first. Right? This is the railway bridge. Now, we know they're going to have to come all the way down here and across the railway bridge. But, now look, the cinder path is quicker, isn't it? So if the priest sends a messenger on foot, we'll know exactly where they're going to land. What if they come in a van? Well, the messenger will have to run, won't they? So what's that there? That's an ashtray. Arthur Percival Albert McBride. He'll go a long way in life with a name like that. Yes, he will. Now, my main concern is that these children are brought up together. They're devoted to one another. And it was a particular concern of their late father. We have several sets of brothers and sisters in our care. I shall, of course, have to confer with our governors. But they meet this evening. And I look forward to seeing the children on Friday. And they're taking all of them. Even the baby. They'll have to be quarantined for a few more days. But even the infirmary's beautiful. Iris, it's the most magnificent place. They'll get an education there. When the boys are older, they'll be trained for a career at sea. You have checked every detail, haven't you? There was a book that I read once. It wasn't a religious book. It was by Thomas Hardy. But there are two people in it who love each other. And the man wants to live with the woman forever. And he says to her, he says, when you look up, there will I be. And when I look up, there will you be. I want the children to have that, Iris. I want them to look up and I want them to see each other. Be because when you were a child and you looked up, there was no one there. Right, let's get you looking smart. Sweetheart, we'll be in a minute, okay? Someone just came for you in the house. <coughs> Do you want to try on Iris's hat? He stands on you. Walk you to the door.
had your orders. Come on. What's this all about? I thought we'd say goodbye. What do you think? It's an empty room. You once told me that you love empty rooms. It's ours, May. If you want it to be. Ours? There will only ever be two keys. The one that you have in your hand and the one that's in mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're at home, you can take your hat off. It's got a pin in it. <laughs> Go and have a look in the cupboard. HP sauce. <laughs> I told you Madeline won't let me have it in the house. Mm. Open it. Diamonds! Boodle and Dunthorne's finest. I was going to buy you another string of pearls, but... Yeah, I'm afraid you'd rather miss a boat on that one. Anyway, pearls are for wives. Meaning what? Oh, come on, May, for Christ's sake. Surely you didn't think that I'd leave her. I thought you couldn't stay. Not now. Mate, my wife bores and terrifies me by turns, but we are married. We're in it for the long haul. There's no way out. I thought this was your way out. No, this is my respite. This is your way out. I beg your pardon. This is a wonderful chance for you. An opportunity to break from your past. To, to live the sort of life that you've always wanted. Empty rooms and all that. Excuse me. But until the other week, I didn't have a past, only a decent upbringing. You may not approve of where I come from, but there's no one in our street set up as a fancy pig. I have never said I did not approve of you. I've, I've told you that I'm not exactly blue blood myself. If I wanted a life of prostitution, I'd take myself down Lime Street. At least I get some fresh air and exercise. But this would not be prostitution. Oh, wouldn't it? No, because I am in love with you. In which case, your behaviour's even worse. May, I am not going to leave my wife. It would be too cruel. And you wouldn't love me if I were cruel, would you? I once threw a bottle of ammonia at you. This time, you can have this. Any livestock? Any pets or chickens at Madanoi? Oh, come on, you've all been told. Need lids on all the boxes or the rabbits will escape. And I won't be held responsible. But I tell you, you eat papers. Come here! You can tie that one up. It's got an evil reputation. I hope you're not talking about my ants. Move your ass, big fella. Mind move your ass. Any life stuff? Wouldn't it? Oh, Jesus! I've leafed in the DC street. Ask about more ladders. Right. Don't wait. What are you doing? 
Add new flame and confectionery tools. Yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, Father. This is a population survey by the Board of Health. There's just myself and three children by the name of McBride. They're orphans, here on a temporary basis. This is an enormous house. I don't know why you're checking me for overcrowding. There are far worse places than this, I can assure you. We had a hard job deciding on which street to go to first. So where did you settle on? Four kids, how many over now? Three. What are you building? Quick, quick, quick. Make sure they stay there until he's checked the lavatory. Right. And the one thing you can't do is go down the alley. Chickens, rabbits, sheep or pigs? Oh, I'm not one for pets. who live with me. My son's currently away at sea. Our four parentless guests you're aware of. This household comprises of three adults, four children. We're not overcrowded. Not in theory, not in practice.
I have a note to the effect that you engage in chocolate making. Have you abandoned this practice? She's been too busy. Looking after our parentless guests. <laughs> mm. Mr. Tracy. Ah, uh, she. Or has she merely hidden all the evidence away? It's in the parlour. Who are you? What? What are you doing here? I am the fourth adult residing in these premises. I'm an old able seam and a chronic sufferer. Take him to the Turner home. very personable child. I don't think he'll give anyone any trouble. <clears throat> One sees some with their features quite deformed by hardship. It's impossible to find adoptive parents for them. No. Adoptive parents? The children's application was processed by the governors last night. Admissions have been under pressure since the war and we have an arrangement with Dr. Bernardo's. No. No, Matron, I have an arrangement with you. And in certain circumstances, we are able to transfer children over to them. They have agreed to take little Arthur, and it's their policy to rehome babies under two. This is not what was agreed! It's a case of what is possible. You're not taking our brother! Arthur and the two eldest boys should see out their quarantine in the sanatorium. Just to be on the safe side. After that, they must go to Bernardo's. What do you mean, the two eldest boys? Barnabas will be very excited when he hears about the farm in Canada that Bernardo's have. He might well be joined there by Joseph in due course. Get them. Yes, Take Mary, them away. This way, Barney. If you want to remove them now, you must apply in writing. Their priest has entrusted them to us. We have their birth certificates. Their applications have been stamped. I'm sorry, but we are their legal guardians now. You! You promised we wouldn't be split up! You promised, Barney! Barney! Where are you? Barnabas! You promised! You promised my dad! You promised! You lied! Barnabas! You promised... Thank you. Control yourself. Not here. Now. Where are you taking me? Get off! I want to be with the others! Let me out! They all have lice. Their heads will have to be cropped. Barney, come here.
Father, it's not your fault. Yes, it is. 